Ever wondered how sailors navigate the vast oceans without getting lost? The answer lies in plain sailing navigation. This fascinating method allows mariners to chart their course and determine their position at sea. The beauty of plain sailing navigation lies in its simplicity. It takes the complex, curved surface of our Earth and transforms it into a flat plane, making calculations far more manageable. Imagine being at sea, surrounded by nothing but water. How do you know where to go? How do you ensure you're not just going in circles? That's where plain sailing navigation comes in. It's like a secret language, a code that only mariners know, helping them find their way across the immense blue expanse. It's more than just a tool, it's a lifeline, a tradition, and a science that has guided adventurers, explorers, and sailors for centuries. By the end of this video, you will understand the basics of plane sailing and how to perform some key calculations. At the heart of plane sailing navigation are some fundamental concepts and terms. As we set sail on this voyage of knowledge, let's begin by exploring some key terms that will be our compass and guide. The first term is course. In navigation, the course refers to the intended path of a vessel over the surface of the Earth. It's like the roadmap for your sea journey, guiding you from point A to point B. Next, we have heading. This is the direction a vessel is pointed at any given moment. It's like the arrow on your compass always showing you the way forward. Then, we have distance. This is the measure of how far the vessel travels. Think of it like the odometer in your car, ticking up the miles as you journey across the sea. Now let's talk about latitude and longitude. These are the coordinates that pinpoint your location on the globe. Latitude lines, also known as parallels, run east to west, while longitude lines, also known as meridians, run north to south. Think of them as the grid on a map that allows you to point out exactly where you are in the world. Finally, let's discuss departure. This is the east-west distance a vessel travels when changing longitude. It's like stepping sideways on your path, shifting your course to the east or west. So in summary, your course is your intended path. Your heading is the direction you're currently pointed in. Distance is how far you've traveled. Latitude and longitude are your coordinates on the globe. And departure is your east-west movement when changing longitude. These are the basic terms you'll need to understand as we dive deeper into the topic of plane sailing navigation. They are the tools in your navigation toolkit, ready to be used in plotting your course and guiding your vessel over the vast expanse of the sea. With these basics in mind, we can now delve into the calculations that make plane sailing possible. The first step in plane sailing calculations involves determining the course and distance. Now let's dive into the heart of plane sailing calculations, determining the course and distance. These two elements are crucial for any successful navigation, and understanding how to calculate them is a key skill for any mariner. So, how do we calculate the course? The course is the angle between the north line and the ship's track, measured clockwise. To calculate this, we use the formula. Course equals arctangent of departure over difference of latitude. If this sounds a bit complicated, don't worry. Let's break it down. The arctangent is a trigonometric function that gives us the angle whose tangent is a given number. The departure is the east or west component of the distance, while the difference of latitude is the north or south component of the distance. Here's a simple example. Imagine you've got a departure of 40 miles east and a difference of latitude of 60 miles north. Plugging these values into our formula gives us a course of around 34 degrees. Next, we calculate the distance. The distance is the length of the ship's track from the point of departure to the destination. We calculate this by using the formula. Distance equals the square root of the sum of the squares of the departure and difference of latitude. Sounds like a mouthful, right? But it's just a fancy way of saying that we're using Pythagoras's theorem to calculate the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle. Let's use our previous example. We have a departure of 40 miles and a difference of latitude of 60 miles. Squaring these, Adding them together and taking the square root gives us a distance of about 72 miles. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you work with these formulas, the more comfortable you'll become. And that's what plain sailing is all about. Mastering the basics so you can navigate with confidence. Once you've mastered calculating course and distance, the rest of the calculations will come much easier. 
The next step in plane sailing calculations involves determining latitude and departure. Let's take a deep dive into how we calculate these key components. Latitude, often symbolized as P, is the north or south distance traveled by a vessel, while departure, symbolized as D, is the east or west distance covered. We calculate latitude by multiplying the course distance by the cosine of the course angle. To put it in simpler terms, just remember this formula. P equals distance times the cosine of the course. Now let's apply this formula to a real-life scenario. Suppose our vessel has traveled a distance of 100 nautical miles at a course angle of 30 degrees. We can calculate the latitude by taking the cosine of 30 degrees and multiplying it by 100. This gives us a latitude of approximately 86 nautical miles. Moving on to departure, it's calculated by multiplying the course distance by the sine of the course angle. In other words, D equals distance times the sine of the course. Let's revisit our example to calculate the departure. Again, the distance traveled is 100 nautical miles, and the course angle is 30 degrees. We take the sine of 30 degrees, multiply it by 100, and voila! Our departure equals about 50 nautical miles. By calculating both latitude and departure, we can determine the vessel's relative position. These calculations are the building blocks of plain sailing navigation, allowing us to plot our course and navigate the vast expanses of the open sea with precision and confidence. Remember, practice makes perfect. Don't hesitate to revisit these formulas and examples until they become second nature. The sea is a vast and unpredictable place, and strong navigation skills are your best defense against its uncertainties. With these calculations, you can determine the ship's position and plot its course on a chart. Now that we've learned the key calculations in plain sailing, let's put our knowledge to the test. Let's start with a simple one. Imagine you're the captain of a vessel heading due east. You've traveled a distance of 300 nautical miles. What's the departure? Remember, in plain sailing, departure is the east-west distance traveled by a ship. If you think about it, since you're heading due east, the departure is simply the distance traveled, which is 300 nautical miles. Easy, right? Now let's add a little twist. Suppose you're sailing southeast this time. You've covered a distance of 200 nautical miles. Can you calculate the departure and the difference in latitude? This one requires a bit more thought. Remember the cosine rule we discussed? You'll need to use that here. The departure is the product of the distance traveled and the cosine of the course and the difference in latitude is the product of the distance traveled and the sine of the course. So, do your math and you'll find the departure is approximately 141 nautical miles, and the difference in latitude is also around 141 nautical miles. All right, let's tackle one final problem. This time, you're sailing on a course of 45 degrees southeast, and you've traveled a distance of 150 nautical miles. Can you calculate the departure and the difference in latitude? Again, you'll need to use the cosine and sine rules. The departure and the difference in latitude will both be approximately 106 nautical miles. As you can see, once you understand the basics and the key formulas, plane sailing calculations can be quite straightforward. It's all about understanding the concepts and then applying them to the different situations you might encounter when navigating a ship. Remember, plane sailing is a simplified method of navigation. It assumes the Earth is flat, which we know isn't the case. But for short distances, it's a useful tool to have in your navigation toolbox. I hope these practice problems have helped solidify your understanding of plane sailing calculations. Don't worry if you didn't get them all right. It's all part of the learning process. The key is to keep practicing. As you work through more and more problems, you'll start to see the patterns and the calculations will become second nature. Remember, practice makes perfect. Keep practicing these calculations and before you know it, You'll be a pro at plain sailing navigation. Until next time, keep exploring the wonders of navigation.